Hi, I'm Harry Potter. And I'm Hermione Granger, and you're watching WCAT's Weekly News. Hey Hermione, how many Hufflepuffs does it take to screw in a light bulb? How many? All of them. <laughs> I hope everyone is getting geared up for a week full of chocolate frogs and cauldron cakes. We want that magic to continue as we look towards next Friday when rivals collide. Westminster versus Lovett, Gryffindor versus Slytherin, Dementors versus Patronus Charm, it goes back as old as time and we need you at Fritz Ward Field, 7.30 next Friday. On a different note, it's time to cast your spell, oh, I mean vote, for midterm elections. If you're old enough to vote, throw your name in the goblet. You can make a difference. The Westminster players have been hard at work to prepare for the performance of Fiddler on the Roof. If tickets are still available, try to go see it this afternoon or tomorrow. WCAT reporters Holly Jackson and Kennedy Howard had the chance to catch up with the players for an inside look about the upcoming show. Hi, I'm Larson Normark. After last night's dress rehearsal, tonight is the first official showing of this fall's musical, Fiddler on the Roof. We interviewed two of the main cast members, Jack Schaff and Adelaide Burroughs, along with student director Max Norman to get an inside scoop on the show. What is Fiddler on the Roof about? So Fiddler on the Roof is about this little village, this Jewish village in Russia called Anatevka. And um, the show is basically about the tradition of this village and kind of how it evolves with changing times. How do you feel about each other's portrayal of their role in the musical? I feel that Jack is doing a really great job in his role as a Russian and just, you know, making that tension very palpable and um, strong. I think that Adelaide does a pretty good job acting in the show, but I don't really know because I spend most of my time backstage doing homework. How do you think this production has come together? I think it's come together really well. We've especially made a lot of leaps and bounds in the past week or so. It's really improved and I'm really excited to see how it turns out and see who comes to see it. So please do. As you can see, a lot of work has gone into this production, so make sure not to miss performances today at 4.30 or tomorrow night at 7. I'm Holly Jackson. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Holly and Kennedy. Can't wait for the show. With Halloween approaching, we all have our minds focused on treats. Junior Druva Ghosh and sophomore Andrew Mao are hosting a bake sale on Friday, November 2nd, outside of Malone Dining Hall. In order to raise money for victims of Hurricane Florence, along with having treats, there will also be a henna station set up outside of Malone. Please stop by. Have you been wondering what the latest fashion trends are around campus? I know Ben and I like to sport our Gryffindor colors, but there are so many different aspects of fashion that Westminster students are interested in. WCAT reporter Namisha Ayer looked into Moda, Westminster's new fashion magazine. Recently, two sophomores started a fashion magazine called Moda. We interviewed Samantha Fauché and Sam Cohn to ask them more about their magazine. What is Moda? So Moda is pretty much a fashion magazine run by Westminster students and we would do articles like street style, what are Westminster kids wearing, runway trends. Where did you get the idea for Moda? Well, we're really inspired by other publications like Vogue and also we noticed other than Fashion Club, there's not a lot of like fashion um, things here at Westminster so we wanted to start something for that. So who can apply to Moda? Um, anyone in the upper school can apply to Moda. We're looking for editors, graphic designers, photographers, and writers. So Also, we know that the application has seemed a little bit challenging, but don't be afraid to apply or feel like you're not knowledgeable enough because we understand that not everyone is going to come in like knowing all the stuff. Also, we have moved back the date um, for the application to be submitted to Tuesday, so make sure to submit your application. Don't forget to check your email and apply for Moda by Tuesday, October 30th. I'm Namisha Iyer. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you. It's time to transition into sports. The Florida Georgia game is tomorrow. And although it's no World Cup Quidditch match, it should definitely be an exciting game. Here's sports reporter Draco Malfoy for an inside look at Westminster sports. Thanks, Hermione and Harry. 
Wednesday was a successful day for both cross-country teams in their respective region meets held here at Westminster. The boys varsity team handily won the 5 AAA region race with a 17 point first place finish, 33 points ahead of the second place Levitt Lions. Will Wallace, Peter Huff, Zach Rowe, Matthew Fernando, and Scott Arbery finished first, second, third, fourth, and sixth respectively. The girls had an amazing meet as well, but finished runner-up as they fell by a slim three points to love it. Naima Turbis finished in first place at the region meet with a time of 18.20, which was one minute and eight seconds faster than the second place finisher. Both boys and girls JV teams also won their respective meets. The AAA state meet takes place on November 3rd at Carrollton Elementary School, where both teams will be looking to repeat as state champions. After two wins last weekend, the Volley Cats advance to the Elite Eight tomorrow against Calhoun at 3.30. The match will be played at Calhoun and will be live on WCAT for those unable to attend. And finally, the varsity football team plays Stone Mountain tonight in the second to last game of the regular season. Kickoff is at 7.30 and bad weather is expected, so make sure to bring your coats and ponchos. The Cats currently hold the number two seed in the five AAA region, but still need to finish strong to remain in that position heading into the playoffs. The game will be live on WCAT with pregame coverage beginning at 7 p.m. That's all for this week. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Draco, and go Cats. Don't forget, the talent assembly is November 8th, and to perform, you must share an audition video with Mr. Morgan by this Sunday, October 28th. Well, that's all for this week's news. For WCAT, I'm Ben Forty. And I'm Evie Reardon, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on WCAT's Weekly News.